quick, simple, healthy recipe, usually a side dish in an Indian restaurant in the UK. But I'm making it as a main, so I'm going to start off with about three and a half tablespoons of desi ghee. And what we have here, we can just have a quick look at that. We've got about four medium cypress potatoes peeled and chopped with a small cauliflower teaspoon of turmeric, teaspoon of salt, not too much water, I like it to steam. I want them al dente. And this is really simple, I'm just going to add about three sliced onions, sauté them for around five minutes, and we'll come back. No need to even introduce the ingredients, it's that simple, what you'll see. Fenugreek goes really well with potatoes, goes well with a lot of things, so heat teaspoon, Nice and dry, crunch it up. Want that to be in the oil as well. Halfway there with the onions. We can also add a teaspoon of salt to the onions. A little bit of spice in those in the salt, not to worry. But this is going to be enough for about four or five portions. Hence the large pan. So those onions have softened, now I'm adding two tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste. Heavy on the ginger, sorry, heavy on the garlic. Not too much ginger. Just give that a stir, cook the raw flavours out, very important. We'll come back in about two and a half minutes. So garlic and ginger have begun to stick on the bottom of the pan. Just scrape that off. Good indicator that the raw flavours are out. So we've got our base there. So what I do have here is a teaspoon and a half of my madras powder you can find on the channel by typing Stephen Heap madras powder. I have half a teaspoon of garam masala and half a teaspoon of tandoori masala. The salt is just what was left from flicking some of the salt into the onions to ensure even cooking. So I just stir this now and get those onions coated quickly. You don't want the spices to burn. So let's just get a little bit of the stock from the alu gobi. Potatoes and cauliflower and just work that in. I want it to come to a really nice heat. We'll come back in we are in a minute and a half, two minutes. So adding the garam masala at this stage really nice makes the dish really nice and fragrant at this stage. So what we have there doesn't look very appealing but that's our concentrated flavour. So what I've got is about six red tomatoes teaspoon of paprika blended into a fine paste. And that's going straight in. Really important to cook the raw fl flavours out. Check the salt. This isn't a spicy dish but a lot of people are so oh, it doesn't taste quite right when you do it like that. You've got to cook it out. So I'm going to get that to a ferocious heat and I'm going to keep on adding water just to pr prolong the cooking Get it really nice and tasty in that way and I'm going to be using water or stock even better from the potatoes and the cauliflower which has already got salt and turmeric in. You could add some cardamom to the water if you wanted that would have been a good idea. So we'll come back once that's boiled down and the raw flavours are out I'd say around 12 minutes. And that's been sweating down with water for about 10 minutes, got some reduction, tastes good. So I'm happy with the water content there, so I'm going to drain the remainder of the water from the alu gobi. And I'm going to put it in. And it's important not to fully cook your cauliflower and potatoes or your parboiled vegetables at any time when you're adding them to, the, to a sauce because you want those to absorb some of the spices, some of the flavour of the sauce. 
So just give it a good mix, make sure everything's covered and I'm going to further reduce that now and make sure all those vegetables are soft and I've used cypress potatoes. We we'll use this, uh, um, a waxy potato, not so much a starchy potato so you don't end up with mashed potato. I'm sure that's happened to you all if you've been cooking curry long enough. So, nice bubble away gently now for another five minutes we'll come back and we'll add the final touches. So it's boiling away now another seven minutes or so. I don't count exactly. It's all about the process. If I tell you seven minutes, you do it for seven minutes if you follow the recipe. So all you're going to get is, oh I did that and followed the instructions exactly and it didn't turn out the way you've yeah, seen it all before. So I'm happy with that. It's still quite liquidy. So I've got a small handful of coconut cream cut up. You could use a little bit of coconut milk. I prefer coconut milk because it's oil based. Sorry, coconut cream in this instance because it's oil based and it'll thicken up my sauce. So I'm going to take it off the heat now and I think that coconut's really going to complement it, make the sauce extra creamy and give it that exotic twist. And while we're there as well, I like a starting, startlingly, a lot of coriander, but I want some colour in that. Notice how, you know, the, uh, it's a nice colour, but it could be better, couldn't it? You know, it's quite, for a curry, it's quite bland in terms of colour with just like the turmeric in the potatoes and cauliflower. So that's just going to add a little bit of colour and a little bit of extra flavour. And while you're stirring the coriander, obviously the coconut cream is going to be melted into the dish as well. So that's it. Simple as that. Check it for salt. That's pretty... Uh, really simple curry there. I recommend serving it with brown poppadoms, sorry, brown roti, brown japati, white rice and uh, adjust the chilli to your liking and that's it, over and out as simple as that. Mm.